This is Walt with Multiversity Comics here with Greg Pock. Greg, how are you doing today? I'm doing very well, thanks much. All right, so the just announced uh, Dead Man's Run here at Aspen Comics. What can you tell us about this new series of yours? This is a uh, it's a crazy story. It's a jailbreak from hell. Um, and hell is a place on earth. It's a maximum security prison in the California desert. And uh, there are giant, uh, there's a giant, uh, um, there's a jailbreak that's going to happen, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, it's going to be uh, going to be nuts. Our hero is a young cartographer named Sam Tinker. And uh, he is uh, hell-bent, if you will, on uh, saving his sister, who is the only innocent in hell. So uh, it's, um, it's a series that we've been developing in conjunction with Gail Ann Hurd, who is the legendary producer of Walking Dead and Aliens and many other great movies, and, um, and uh, her company Valhalla Pictures, so, or Valhalla Entertainment. So um, yeah, we're having a huge amount of fun. Tony Parker is the artist, and he's doing a great job. Um, something we'll come back to later is your the way that you do research and with this series uh, how much research did you do into you know prisons and you mentioned cartography and I'm <laughs> did you actually like uh, do significant research on how cartographers work or do you have any first-hand experience yeah I actually will the uh, that's an excellent question I haven't done that hardcore research on the art of cartography yet um, I have done a lot of research in prisons though I mean I, I that was where I really focused most of my um, prep time looking at uh, prisons throughout the ages and um, and also prison breaks uh, and also different depictions of hell um, because there I mean there hell you know stories about hell have been popular for millennia uh, and they are um, there's just so much rich metaphorical stuff you can deal with there um, we're trying to do something a little different and uh, I'm gonna uh, I'll actually, I'll, I'll just go ahead and tell you some stuff, which is that, um, uh, you know, when you think about hell, on one level, hell seems like, okay, that's where sinners go. Therefore, it is actually, uh, it's, it's, it's part of the machinery of cosmic justice. Um, but when you think about the way we think about hell is like the worst place there is, right? It's, and when you talk about hell on earth, when you talk about, oh my God, it was hell, um, on, an, on a visceral human level, I think... Hell is about injustice. You know what I mean? It's about corruption. It's about it's about suffering for something you don't deserve to suffer for. That is that's hell. Is like is like to be to be stuck in in a in a hellish place with no recourse unjustly. You know. And so these themes of corruption and injustice are actually threaded throughout this storyline. And um, we're, we've created a whole world, uh, a whole political system, really, where hell. Fits, you know, hell fits into this this kind of place where uh, where where uh, where our world and the next world intersect. And in the in the in the world of Dead Man's Run, there's a whole kind of um, very down to earth political reality surrounding how hell is managed. And uh, so so we're I, we're really striving to kind of combine that um, that very real sort of relevant feeling with these kind of supernatural and fantastical elements. Uh, so do you think it's safe to say that this story is fairly allegorical in nature? Well, I don't know if I'd, I, I, I don't know if I'll, I'll let, I'll let readers decide. Okay. And how long have you been working on this idea? Is it something new or is it something that's been kind of like on the back burner for a while trying to develop and then you had your chance? Or? Yeah, well, it's been percolating for quite a while. I mean, we first started talking about it about two years ago. Ben Roberts at Valhalla called me up with this crazy idea of a jailbreak from hell. And we've just been, um, you know, as schedules worked out and everything, we were talking about it intermittently and then finally all the, all, you know, all the, all the paperwork got settled and we were in all the schedules worked out and now we're, you know, in the last in the last year or so, we've really been able to focus on on it in a in a very serious way, and all of these things have come together. So, but it's nice when a project has some time to, to percolate, you know. So we we've, we've been able to to, to to bounce ideas or off each other for quite a while. All right, um, moving over to your Marvel work. As we said, we talked with Fred the other day, mm -hmm. and that's when I mentioned research. Uh, he talked about how you, in particular, did a lot of the research into the politics of Canada. That you read Canadian news and so on and so forth. Um, how much uh, work did you put into that and you know what kind of sources did you use besides just the news? Right. Well the, the uh, that series of tubes called the internets is very helpful. Uh, so yeah I mean I was I was reading 
Wikipedia entries and then getting corroboration from actual verified sources and all that kind of stuff. I mean, I, I did a lot of poking around online reading about um, how the government of Canada works and uh, in, in particular emphasis on how the elections work and how turnover happens. Um, and, uh, and it was interesting because, you know, there, there have been constitutional crises in Canada that Americans and the rest of the world have no idea about, you know what I mean? And, and it's, 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 it's fascinating. I mean, talking to Canadians, they, I mean, I've talked to a few Canadians and I'm, I'm talking about how fascinating this is. And they're like, yeah, fascinating, whatever. <laughs> I, can, I mean, it, 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 sometimes this stuff, I see some, I see some, some fists being bumped over here. Um, the cameraman you know, is Canadian. Okay, there you go. But, uh, you know, I mean, it, it, the, the sort of intricacies of the political process can sometimes be very tedious, but when, when I got very excited reading about it because it was like, oh, well, this stuff actually fits it's into this world that we are, you know, the, the, this crazy thing we're, we're thinking about doing. Because the whole premise of the Alpha Flight book is that Canada has gone fascist. And um, in Canada where you have a, uh, where elections can be called, sort of similarly to in Britain as opposed to them being scheduled at certain times, um, you actually have the potential for a turnover in government in a in a, in in a, in, rea in 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 a fairly short amount of time, um, which is a harder thing to kind of you know to fictionally stage in an American if we're setting in America, um, and then there's also these intricacies about the. Uh, the you know the uh, the well I won't go into it all but but it was it was just cool you know the way these things kind of allowed themselves to uh, to fit in and then what was really nuts is that um, so we set up this whole thing where there's this change you know there's this election in the middle of all this this crisis you know in the wake of fear itself the Marvel universe the week the book came out there was an actual election in Canada um, and so these 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 events kind of uh, reality copied us so. We're, we're, we're talking to lawyers, see if we can get some money back, but no, it's, it, was, it was nice. So uh, how much of this do you think is just you and Fred telling you know, a story that you find is exciting? And how much of it do you, would you say is something in terms of just, this is something we should be worried about, something we should, <laughs> maybe, this is always a possibility, something on the brink? Is it a real? I, I, I mean, I we picked. I mean, we thought that this was a great match for Canada, just because if we could make it, if we could make people believe that there could be a fascist government taking over in Canada, then we would really have done our jobs. Because you know, the stereotype of Canada is like mild-mannered, multicultural, America's hat. You know what I mean? And and um, that's the that's the. I'm not saying I endorse that stereotype. I'm just saying that is the stereotype. Yeah. America's hat was a term told to me by a Canadian. I did not come up with that myself. Um, but anyway, I, uh, but, but if we could make it work there, fictionally, then we would have done something fairly convincing. I, I make no, I make no, pres I, 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 I am not uh, trying to say that Canada is in danger of becoming a fascist nation. However people want to read it is, is fine. People can always, you know, take something and, uh, and enjoy it on whatever level they, you know, enjoy it on whatever, meta with whatever metaphor or uh, allegory they want to lay over it. Um, I'm not. Uh, I'm not saying we are actually trying to predict or, or uh, make any predictions about actual events. <laughs>